please note that all episodes come with a blanket content warning. The books we read often tackle difficult and triggering subjects. We'll include specific content warnings in the description of each episode, so please take care of yourself and check them out. And finally, if you're not comfortable with swearing, now is probably a good time to stop listening. Welcome to Hectic and Eclectic, the podcast for readers whose brains are hectic and whose bookshelves are eclectic. I'm Hope. And I'm Fear. Um, We are currently sharing a mic, in case you couldn't tell, slash you aren't watching the video. Mm. Um, The other mic is having a moment. She really is. Um, So we're going to share one for now. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if the sound changes halfway through, um, one of two things has happened. A, the other mic has started working again. Or B, this working mic has also broken (laughs) and we've had to switch to a different means of audio input. (laughs) I'm still a little bit intoxicated (laughs) from my shenanigans last night. So y'all are going to have to bear with me. (laughs) What's going on? What's going on with me? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm in a bit of a... Well, you're in a an, an intoxication fog, whereas I'm just in a half term um, person who works in education, finally getting a rest. So, like half term itis fog. I, I'm aware that I have a brain. Um, it's just that it's not necessarily doing what brains are supposed to do. That's my life. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I see that for you actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So bear with both of us and our equipment today (laughs) we're going to see a movie tonight what are we going to see um immaculate Immaculate. yeah it's um it's a nun horror which um which i hate the nun is my least favorite horror film not because it's a shit film but because it is a shit film you know it is so bad it is a shit film (laughs) yeah um but because it frightened me so much (laughs) the first time i watched it (laughs) Did you watch any of the other like conjuring movies that the nun was in? No. Okay, I they're think, so uh, much better. That's a lie. I think I might have seen the first conjuring. Mm-hmm. Um, but I appear to have blocked it out. <laughs> I have a vague memory of having watched. Really? Watched so it. is it is it the is it like the the visuals of her that are really scary, or is it that the law behind her or like I think maybe that and also those we were talk- like we were talking about before, those movies very much rely on jump scares. Mm. And I really hate jump scares. You do. But like, it's Because once because... my adrenaline peaks, I find it really hard to bring it back down. Right, okay. So after the first jump scare, the other jump scares aren't going to do much. No, it's more after the first jump scare, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> is that- Right, so is that an experience that like you don't want out of a horror movie? Yeah, no. Okay. I don't want... I don't mind the odd jump scare, uh-huh. but I think they're cheap. Yeah. I think they're a cheap way of scaring an audience. Mm. What are you reading? Um, at the moment, I'm reading um, Still Making My Way Through 19 Claws and a Blackbird by Agostina Basterica. Which you have spoken about. Which I have spoken about. The second? What, fourth, first? I think so. Second. First or second episode? Yeah. Um now, the reason I'm making my way through this very, very slowly is I've got a bit of short story fatigue. So I just dip in and out of it whenever the mood strikes me. That makes so sense. I'm nearly finished. I got a glimpse of your story graph the other day. And to my horror, Fia currently has about 12 books on the go. It's now 13. Like, so you know, in goodreads i because i'm assuming most people use goodreads still which is a shame but um mm. on your currently reading you know you can just swipe through them they'll all stay at the top with your percentage and you can swipe through them um storygraph does a similar thing except it, put, it puts them in a vertical list i just i don't have the heart to be like dnf because it's not that i don't want to finish these books it's that i don't want to finish them now right i should just dnf them for now like on story there was um there was a different that i've always said that there should be a good read should have a dnf option mm. which it doesn't story graph does but the other one is um there was like an alternative to dnf which was like i think it was nrn which was not right now oh yeah i need one of those yeah right yeah so it's like i don't 
I'll definitely come back to it. Mm. I don't hate it. I'm just not in the mood for it. Don't understand how your brain can function. Reading three books at a time plus. So I started reading Clara and the Sun by Ishiguro. Mm -hmm. Um, So did I. Started. Yeah. And I got about halfway through. Same. And I got a bit tired. I was bored. But I am interested to see where it goes. I wasn't. And how it ends. <laughs> I want to know. So the main character is unwell mm-hmm. in some way. Mm-hmm. And I want to know what's up with her. Mm-hmm. It's my main thing. I didn't hate the writing. I just, I got bored of that book and I just wanted to read something else. So it's been on my Goodreads currently reading for about six months. And every time I see it, it bugs the shit out of me. I love Ishiguro. I think he's got such an incredible imagination. And he's so, like, his whole back catalogue is so eclectic. Like, mm. he is one of those authors who can just write anything and write it beautifully. I do. I want to read um, Never Let Me Go. Oh, me too. Um, I'm sad I watched the movie first. I have not. Movie was... Yeah, <laughs> it was back when Kira Knightley was coasting on her cheekbones. Did that ever stop? The feminist in me wants me to say yes. I, f- the moviegoer in me, <laughs> wants me to say not really. <laughs> um, all right, hot take. Okay, I'm ready. I think Kira Knightley peaked at Bend It Like Beckham. <laughs> first movie and it's only been down (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah i feel like male producers and directors like just got so obsessed with her cheekbones and (laughs) and that thing her mouth does (laughs) (laughs) have you ever we're not here to slag off women (laughs) we're really not here to Slag off if you want to slag off, good people. if you want to slag off men, I'm all for it. <laughs> Maybe we need to even the playing field just a little bit. Yeah, some right. women deserve Fair slagging enough. off. <laughs> J.K. Rowling, <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what a pair of trash human beings. Um, I keep, I love that J.K. Rowling is all go on then Scotland, arrest me. Scotland's like, no, you're such an attention seeking. <laughs> For me, it's the wasted 70 grand. Sorry, which 70 grand is this? That she um, donated to, it was like a, I'd have to get the specific details, but it was like a GoFundMe or something Mm -hmm. that was um, the group that were opposing Scotland's bill that they were trying to pass. That's what she donated 70 grand to. Okay. And obviously the bill still passed. So it's the wasted 70 grand for me. Okay, so this is my first ever advanced reader copy called Lost in the Garden. Look at that cover. That's fit as fuck. Um, It's from Dead Ink Books. There's something I really hate about this cover. Oh my God, what? The cover itself. Like what the, is your deal? Okay, so the, the picture is lush. On the cover is gorgeous. Yeah. Feel, I wish there was just, just this this pink haze filter that they've got over it. I wish Mm. they just turned it down a little bit. So I'll read you the blurb. Heather, Rachel and Antonia are going to Ormondby. Heather needs to find her boyfriend who, like so many, went and never came back. Rachel has a mysterious package to deliver and her life depends on it. And Antonia, poor love-struck Antonia, just wants the chance to spend the day with Heather. So off they set through the idyllic yet perilous English countryside in which nature thrives in abundance and summer lasts forever. And as they travel through ever-shifting geography and encounter strange voices in the fizz of shortwave radio, the harder it becomes to tell friend from foe. Creepy, dreamlike, unsettling and unforgettable, you are about to join the privileged few who come to understand exactly why we don't go to (laughs) Almondby. Okay. I, there are a couple of things I really like the sound of in there. Mm. Um, It's very like um, idyllic, um, but also creepy road trip. Yep. Vibes, mm-hmm. which I, I love. Yeah. Um, and 
it's um it sounds a, a little bit sort of coming of age esque mm. three girls on a road trip kind of thing yep and the the, the sort of endless summer of the english countryside mm. and i feel like you could get a lot of really beautiful descriptions out of yeah. it yeah so i i would give this book a three star out of five, five. out of five imagine if it was 10 how what? rude would <laughs> well, that that's be? what i thought i needed to check <laughs> my three star for me is the equivalent of meh yeah it's not that i feel like it's totally meh because there was a lot that was really really good about this it's just from that blurb i was expecting more folk horror than i got right yeah yeah for At sure no point did i feel truly unsettled or disturbed or like oh this is creepy is it pitched as a horror book well it kind of feels like it from the co- i mean the covers giving midsommar yeah the i mean this blurb is is giving midsummer 1980s right right yeah um and i, I wasn't scared i wasn't unsettled i wasn't creeped out um they could have done they they had everything to do it with as well the mm, road trip mm, the countryside yeah the the heat of summer yeah like they had everything going yeah in that. for sure like so with with so it's by adam s leslie i don't think i've said that before um but i think i'm pretty sure this is his his debut fiction the thing with it is that for me this is all all vibes and not enough meat to it Mm -hmm. like um his his writing style is so fun it's really really fun it's very irreverent it's very like like silly and playful um it's it's that and you get do get that vibe from the blurb with the mm. this is why we don't go to warm and be like yeah 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 for sure and like um there's a lot of really like fun character stuff going on here mm-hmm. like all of those characters are really well realized and it's nice to have a queer character who's um who's like a main character as mm-hmm. well um and like all of that's really really good and the um all of the dialogue is so fun. Like they're they're all just like traipsing through the countryside. It's eternal summer. They've got um these these people who were dead who have like they're not exactly zombies, they're not exactly ghosts. They've like they've sort of risen from their graves without their graves actually being disturbed, and they're all walking around with like any weapon they can find and they are beating the shit out of people Uh um so every everyone tries to obviously like keep away from them but um heather who's one of the main characters um is one of the founding members of the chicken club with um with her boyfriend Stephen. um so they basically play chicken but ghost edition so um see how long you can um hang out around a ghost without um them beating you up or great um see if you can steal something out of their pocket or you know like all that kind of stuff right so it's very very irreverent and very childish and the world is no longer as we know it you know people mm. people can't really go to work when like their their grandpa is like banging on the window who who's been long dead you know um so there's a lot that's really fun and really funny about and, it and that's just the world that's, that's just, just the world yeah and ev- we've just accepted this we've well yeah basically it's been it's been eternal summer and the ghosts have been around for like three four years by this point so it sounds like the humor's taken precedence over the creepy yes definitely and that's a very fine balance to strike with a, it is. a horror yeah if you're gonna put humor into it it can very much work mm. but it's a very fine balance. i think I think this could have been a really funny but also genuinely horrific story. Yeah. And we just didn't get that. Okay. Really. Mm-hmm. Um I mean that might just be my personal taste though. Like I I thought this would be folk horror and maybe that's on me, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe you went into it with like the wrong. Yeah, maybe I just expected more horror. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, it's quite a long book. You can you can get lost in this book and if you love the vibes then that will be a really fun experience. Okay. But there's not, like a lot of it is just them trying to get to this place and trying to find Stephen and trying to deliver this package. And there's not, 
it could have been pacier. That he could have cut a hundred pages. Yeah, I was going to say for for something that um, you don't feel did very well at what it or what we assuming are assuming it was supposed mm. to do. It's thick. Yeah, it is. That's quite a big a big boy book it's for it about, to do nothing and not really go anywhere. It's about 450 pages. Don't get me wrong, it does go somewhere. It's just when you get there, um, it's disappointing. it dilly-dallies way too much and there's not enough gore and there's not enough... There is folklore, but it's just not enough. It's just never really enough for me with this book. Um, I'll read you a passage from it that I think gives you a good idea of like the overall vibe the midday sun sat like a burden hot and heavy on the arched back of the sky it pressed down on everything it touched on the trees and the fields and the animals and the people all except heather who seemed to have gained a renewed vigor and raced around in increasingly elaborate spirograph whirls They'd left the road a long way behind them now and had instead picked up the trail of the River Coal, which cut its way through the countryside, green and slow and sulking beneath the heady humidity. Kingfishers and dragonflies patrolled the line of the river, flashing back and forth along its length, while clouds of gnats held court and mayflies danced their elegant up and down and up and down and up and down quadrille into eternity. Over on the left, beyond the sheep and ghosts and hedgerows, sat the spires and sun-tanned roofs of identical twins Colbeck and Colebrook, and then tiny Colford beyond that. Heather ran circles around Rachel and Antonia, her grin bordering on manic. Rachel's frown twitched with the irritation. It was Stephen who taught me how to knit, said Heather, barely out of breath. Everyone thinks I taught him, but he taught me. Fascinating, Rachel said. We knitted jumpers and socks for all the displaced people and the poor people. Every Sunday down at the village hall with the old ladies, all the old cauliflower heads. I thought it'd be really boring, but actually it was fun. He used to organise raffles and parcels, all sorts of crap like that. It was great. I've got an itchy leg. And again, she was off, curving out into the field and chortling at every random passing thought. Bloody hell, said Rachel. It's giving ADHD. Heather is the embodiment of ADHD. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I sort of love that. It's, it's very funny. It's like, like you say, it's very like it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's a fun book. Yeah, it's just it's just for me. It meanders way too much, um, and 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 the more sort of like potentially horrific elements only ended up being potentially horrific mm. as opposed to actually horrific. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not. I'm not mad I read this story. Like it's it's a fun story. I feel like I've got a really vivid picture of um like the journey to Ormondby as well as Ormondby mm-hmm. in my head. Um and some of the like some of the weirder elements when they do end up in Ormondby are again really, really vivid for me and were really enjoyable to read. It's just all of it could have been done in a shorter space of time. In a shorter space of time. I've got a bunch of recommendations off the back of this book that are better that i think same vibe but better same vibe more horror okay yeah yeah cool so um if you want endless feeling of summer with more folky vibes in the sense of like set in medieval times um and you want gore and horror and disgust you should read lapfona by otessa moshveg Mm -hmm. it is horrible it's fucking horrible. big trigger warning on that one. Huge trigger. Check the content warning. Yes. One. Um, one of my other favorite dead ink books. So, Lost in the Garden is a dead ink book. Um, Lucy McKnight Hardy's Water Shall Refuse Them is a great story. So, that's set in the 70s. It's set during a heat wave, and you've got a family who have recently lost one of their children. And they are going on a family holiday to Wales um to try and like cheer them up move forward a little bit um this is very occult vibes it's very um creeping sense of unease the twist is chef's kiss she's a beautiful writer lucy mcknight hardy she is very very good at being unsettling but also like capturing that like beautiful like bucolic countryside Mm. that's got something ugly lurking underneath which was what I was expecting from this. Which we didn't get from this, right. unfortunately. Um, 
Villager by Tom Cox is so good. So this is like, I thought of this because of Almondby, because it's this this village that almost has like, it's almost a character itself. Um, Villager yeah. does that so perfectly. So it's basically the kind of novel where each chapter is about a different villager from a different point in time in this village. And it's set sort of like, if this village was in Dartmoor on like this big hill and um, yeah, just like the description is oh, God amazing. Like you feel like you've been there mm -hmm. um, as you should, as you should. And all the characters are so, so fleshed out and they all sort of like interweave in these tiny, but really significant ways. And it's just like super immersive um, you really feel all the weather. You really feel yeah. like you're in it. So yeah, so those are my recommendations off the back of having read Lost in the Garden. Cool. Okay, so this week I have read Belladonna by Adeline Grace. The cover, mm, oh, I'm in love. The cover's beautiful. The cover is so beautiful. Do you know what? That would make a really fit tattoo, that cover. Yeah, it's fit as fuck. Um... And I have found myself in quite a long-standing fantasy slump. Mm. So um, when I read fantasy, I read YA fantasy. I tend to avoid adult fantasy. I don't like high fantasy. I don't like it to be too fantasy. -y. Um, I just <laughs> want. Fine. I just want. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just want I don't a think bit. We do. I just want a bit. Um, I don't want the fant I don't want too heavy on the fantasy element. Okay. I want it like a world I recognize with fantasy elements. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Right? Yeah. Um I so that's where I don't I don't fall into high fantasy because when you start giving me like different races like elves and fae and stuff like that, okay. I start to my brain just fucks off <laughs> i'm like i'm not i'm not here for this We're done. um so red queen the red queen series by victoria aviard is my um fantasy roman empire i've read all but one okay um and the reason i didn't read the last one is because i couldn't bear for the series to end oh <laughs> because i loved it so much i didn't want to know what was going to happen i didn't want to know who was going to die and who was going to survive and i didn't want the series to end because she Victoria Ariad moved on to a different series. So the Red Queen series is finished and I didn't want it to finish. So I refused to read the last book. <laughs> and so because I refused to read the last book, I ended up in a fantasy slump. Right. Because okay. nothing lived up. Uh -huh. So I would start reading something and then I would be like, Ugh! I can't. It's oh, and Cruel Prince didn't help. Oh, you were, you were mad. You were big mad about Cruel Prince. So I tried to read Coral Prince and I hated it so much that for the first time I I was like, burn this book. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that made I you I don't condone that much? burning books. But the, this is the exception I think that proves the every role. edition of Coral Prince is better used <laughs> as kindling. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Holly Black. I don't think you are. I'm sorry, Cruel Prince stands. I don't think you are. You should just own it. All right. You, you hate it. Uh, yeah, it's awful. You hate it with a passion. It's bad. I would go out of my way to recommend that people do not read that book. <laughs> <laughs> Can you summarise in like three bullet points why you hate it so much? Um, it's high fantasy. Okay. In YA fantasy. Oh god. It's YA, but it's high. And I'm like, if I wanted high watch. fantasy, I'd go to adult fantasy. I'd go to Sarah J. Mars. Mm. Right? I, this doesn't belong in YA, first off. The main character, I believe she's called Jude, I think was good, was written well. Okay. Seemed like someone I would get along with. Okay. Seems like someone I'd be friends with. Mm -hmm. That was the only bit of the writing that I enjoyed. Everything else was awful. I couldn't pay attention. Okay. I remember thinking, has this sentence ended yet? <laughs> um, oh and also, I, I just felt like I was constantly thinking, wait, how did we get here? Oh. And having to like nip back and read like the previous page or the previous few pages or 
because I just couldn't remember getting to where we were. Right. Or like, I'd be like, who's that person again? Oh God. And okay. I feel like if I'm thinking that, you're not writing very well. I accept that my brain, my ADHD brain is a little bit fancy ball in a shoebox, but I can follow a plot most of the time. <laughs> no, I, if I'm sober, I can follow a plot. Uh-huh. Listen, and I don't read intoxicated so i should have i should have been able to follow that plot and i couldn't and that is on holly black (laughs) um so i give books 10 percent of their whole page number before i decide whether or not i'm going to continue or i'm going to dnf Mm -hmm. and i've never dnf'd a book so fast i've never been so happy to dnf a book i've never been so happy to see the back of it and i never want to encounter it again (laughs) um thank you for your honesty um we're sorry holly black but it sounds like you need to do better to be honest but she's got like fans yeah like that'll be some people's bag you know yeah like like cruel prince like the uh, the characters in cruel prince are like um half of tiktok's book boyfriends that's a red flag firstly (laughs) everyone on tiktok is not okay we all know this. Book talk has gone a bit wild. Yeah. You know, like the dedication you showed me earlier that was like <laughs> to the good girls. Who to just all the good get... girls who want to get railed by a psychopath. Proves that book talk's not okay. <laughs> right. So Belladonna by Adeline Grace. <laughs> what a segue. Has pulled me <laughs> has pulled me out of my fan- YA fantasy slum. I'm really happy for you. I am in love with this book. I read it in a matter of days. I sped through this book. The writing is just gorgeous. The main character, love, love. I just, everything about it, everything about it, I love. Um, A lot of the reviews were like, oh, I saw the twist coming. I personally didn't Mm -hmm. see the twist coming. Always lovely. Um, Maybe that's because I'm stupid and other people are smarter than me. Um, which yeah is a very likely <laughs> um, outcome um, but I didn't see it coming I even though I didn't see it coming the only thing I would say about this is that the reaction to the twist like within the book like the character's reaction yeah. to the outcome of the, the twist um, felt a little bit lacking oh um I wasn't expecting the twist, but then when the twist was dealt with, I Mm. felt like it could have been done better. Okay, like there wasn't enough impact. Right, yeah. Okay, interesting. And that's the only thing that I was sort of like, oh, okay, which is why I would give it four stars and not five. When I initially um, set this as finished on Storygraph, I gave it 4.25. Oh, okay. Very specific. Very specific. But on reflection, I think four is probably better okay. because I think you've got to get the ending right. Yeah. Um, and while I didn't think, I don't think she got it wrong, mm. I don't think it was done as well as it could have been. Okay. Um, so four stars it is. The descriptions in this book, though, are just gorgeous. And I went straight into the sequel which is called foxglove this cover is fucking banging honestly like that fox's creepy pupilless eyes yeah um the fact that there's obviously this like bird motif yeah so you've got these like little what are they chaffinches and no idea on belladonna and then a chaffinch in the mouth of this creepy ass fox yeah on the second cover and those fox gloves are obviously just stunning. I love this book so much, like Red Queen, that I think... So this is, um, if you don't know, Belladonna is the first in a trilogy. So Belladonna's the first, fox gloves the second, and Wisteria, which is the third, is coming out in August this year. I think this is going to be one of those books okay. that I would collect editions of i want like the u.s cover i want the fairy loop cover like i want all of the editions because some of the covers that's understandable they're so gorgeous that is really understandable Um, and i've just discovered that wisteria as we were talking about it before we started recording has Mm. two covers the signed edition has one 
cover mm. and the normal edition has a different cover yeah. and I don't know which one I want They're so I'm probably lost. just going to get both so Signa is our main character she is 19 mm-hmm. um, and she can't die right um she can see death she can see spirits and when we come into this book that's all we know okay so that was all I will tell you going into the book Um, I'll very quickly read you the blurb because it's not too big. For as long as Signa Farrow has been alive, the people in her life have fallen like stars. Orphaned as a baby, 19-year-old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well-being, and each has met an untimely end. Her remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorngrove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties, while his son grapples for control of the family's waning reputation, and his daughter suffers from a mysterious illness. But when their mother's restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned, Signa realises that the family she depends on could be in grave danger, and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. Signa's best chance of uncovering the murder is an alliance with death himself, a fascinating, dangerous shadow who has never been far from her side. Though he's made her life a living hell, death shows Signa that their growing connection may be more powerful and more irresistible than she ever dared imagine. So there's a romance going on between Signa and death. We know that as well. That's hot. From the blurb. The book talk psycho girlies will love that. Yes. And you know what? Actually, it's really good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's some good smut in it. Do you know why a tends not to be very smutty okay there's two intimate scenes in this book Mm -hmm. one is very much a fade to black okay and Mm -hmm. one is a little more detailed i would say it is more detailed than i would expect from a ya Mm, okay um but it doesn't stray into like 18 plus territory yeah Right. It sounds pretty tasteful. Yeah, I think it is. Mm. And I think it's written really well. It's gothic vibes. So there's the, it's very like the setting coming to life. Mm. In most of this case, it's the spirits in the earth. No, 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 no. The home, the, the estate. The estate. For the most part, it's the spirits that make the estate alive the home alive right but occasionally you get those um descriptions of the environment Mm. and it's very like human Mm. it's very it has feeling personification right i i think adeline grace is just just the way she writes just really like that was why i think i was able to fly through it yeah because even in the bits where not a lot was happening Mm. The writing was just so full, so intentional. Mm. that I was just like, I can keep reading through this. And then I've started Foxglove, loving it. Oh, ace. I don't think I've read anything from a series since I was probably a teenager. How come? I don't know. I think I think fantasy doesn't really appeal to me as a reader. And then, and most of the series are fantasy. Yeah, yeah. And then with sci-fi, I tend to like things that are um, less sort of like. I don't really know what the proper term is for this, but like the high fantasy version of sci-fi, where you have mm. like um, writers who will write fucking like eight books in a series, and like it's the world building is absolutely insane, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I've I've never really got into that level like adrian tchaikovsky kind of level yeah 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 um but yeah i do feel like i'm leaning more into sort of like different types of sci-fi at the moment which are like quite like a contemporary setting where there's often like climate change vibes or like um eco catastrophe yeah it's still like rooted in our world very much so yeah yeah and it's like oh how can we fix this how can we save this what's going to go wrong yeah that sort of a thing eco fiction's like a a subgenre of its own as well yeah there are a couple of like eco fiction books that i'm that are on my tbr right now Um, eco fiction's never really appealed to me but then i don't I don't lean towards sci-fi. I definitely lean Mm. more fantasy than sci-fi. I just love nature so much that, like, 
the descriptions and the settings and yeah. stuff, things that are, that are in eco fiction and like folk horror and like very folklore very your thing are very my thing yeah yeah, yeah. i was gonna say like i i don't i I thought when I said it then I was like I don't lean towards sci-fi but then I'm like I love Doctor Who mm. and like all that kind of maybe just reading like, sci-fi yeah isn't really Sarah like Jane Adventures was my bag back in the day oh, yeah loved that Great time. um yeah so I'm I'm loving these I You're do having a lovely time. I also I'm very careful about what series I fall into because I do prefer standalones mm. because they're just less of a commitment yeah I'm like, if I love the first one, obviously you don't have to, but if I love the first one, like I'm gonna love the second one and the third mm-hmm. one and the fourth one. So why would I not read it? Yeah. Whereas if I love a standalone, I can just be like, oh my god, I loved that. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what's next yeah. from that author kind of thing. Um, um so yeah. Awesome. I got some book mail. So I found this horror book subscription um account on instagram who they're called horror hut and um they're gonna start doing like horror goodie boxes from october this year so they're very much doing like a so book subscription box so it's it's sort of like fairy loot idea Mm -hmm. but fairy loot is very fantasy focused and this Mm -hmm. is horror Horror. focused yeah um so they've sent a box of goodies and i'm gonna do like a survey for them um to give them some feedback but i thought it was really cute and it arrived literally as we were about to record so i was just like "Mm, fuck it i'll do it's fate an unboxing (laughs) so (laughs) welcome um, to my unboxing video welcome to my unboxing video everything's falling out so yeah i'll I'll show you bit by bit what we've got so we've got i'll start with the bigger stuff so we've got a reading log, which is Horror Hut branded, which is cool. Although you can't see the logo that well. It's like a it's like a red outline of a book and it's bleeding. And to be clear, really cool. that's not our camera. Um, no. The logo is just unfortunately very hard to see, but it's a yeah. beautiful logo. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so you can track what you're reading. It's got like various different bits to it. I hate the feel of this paper. Yeah, me too. It's That's, not, it's too plasticky, isn't it? Yeah, I want real paper because yeah, I like to write in fountain pen. Yeah. And on those, you have to use a biro. I feel like there'll be a lot of that from a lot of bookish folks. So we've got um a skulls and roses foldable shopping bag. <laughs> um so Can you show us what the bag looks like inside. Oh yeah, sure. Um so obviously all of this is Halloween themed because this is when they're going to be releasing their first box. Um, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so glad I oh, asked you to take it out. Oh, my God, really it's gorgeous. Fun. Oh, I love this. Okay, so we've got like a, uh, a roses, like an orangey autumnal feel and a huge skull in the middle. That is so fun. That's beautiful. Okay, I love that. Um, we've got, I think this is a cookie. It looks like one. It does, Shall we try it? it? So we've got like a tombstone cookie. It's almost, a, I, hate, I, not, I hate cookies like that, but cookies like that always, I'm like, I don't want to bite into it. Yeah, I got over that very young. I think it's because I got really into like marzipan fruit <laughs> and they, they look so beautiful. And I was like, oh no, I don't want to eat it. And then I was oh, like, no, it's no, like, no. um, it's like been like dusted with like yeah, gold dust. It's, it's got, so pretty. Got like a bronze kind of. Oh, that's so fit. Okay, Sorry. right. Should we go half each? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's like it's like really soft shortbread. That's banging. Mm. Ten out of ten. It's like um mm. just the right amount of icing to the right amount of cookie. That is a that is a good cookie. Hell yeah. And then we've I'm got to carry on eating this while you show us the rest. Please feel free. So we've got like a little trick or treaters bag. We've got. A little pencil case, got some highlighters, got some decent colours in there. Biro, I am a biro bitch. Black biro bitch. I've just coined that. Um, Are you going to eat that? I am, but I'm busy unboxing. Chill out, mate. I would really like the rest of that cookie. Okay, let me have one more bite and then I want I want to try it. I want more face. It's a really nice cookie. Of course. All right, you can have that. Thank you. Let's all go. Oh, I've got a blue biro, which I hate. You can have that. I don't know why I have this thing. Black biro is the thing I always want to write with. Blue biro is the work of the devil. Um, we've got a bunch of tabs, which I've been meaning to buy for bloody ages. So thank you, Horror Heart, for those. <gasps> Galaxy Hot Chocolate. Two of them. They're for me. We've got a skull uh, key ring there, which has like all these like Celtic 
style carvings on it. Um, we've got a black cat and pumpkin pencil. We've got these cute little rubbers, a pumpkin and a kitty face. For any cat face. American viewers, erasers. Oh, thank you for because... translating. And then we've got this. So this is a refillable hand sanitizer thing with um, a little kitty on the front who is carrying a wand and reading a spell book. It's McGonagall. Is that McGonagall? It's Mag- uh, no, I don't think it's like actually McGonagall, but like... It's giving McGonagall. It's giving McGonagall. I see. I see. <laughs> Ooh, trick or treat. Okay, so we've got a little envelope here that says trick or treat on it. So I'm going to open the envelope. Claw mark sticker. Is it a sticker or is it a temporary tattoo? Who knows? It's a sticker. Is it? <gasps> oh my God, I love this one. This is just a shitload of books, just a big pile, big messy pile of books. They look spellbook esque and a sticker that says books are magical i'm gonna put that on my laptop i love this sticker this one that you just showed with yeah the that's books. gorgeous isn't it um we've got <laughs> we've got a very homemade bookmark nothing wrong with homemade nothing wrong with homemade um with the Hor- horror heart logo on it but this maybe could do with some professionalizing yeah um, I know what you're getting at. Yeah, um, but I do appreciate bookmarks that are waterproof, which this one clearly is. I do appreciate that a lot. I and, have started crocheting my bookmark. Oh, do you know what I need to do? So I got really into macrame a little while ago. Um, I really want to macrame myself like a book envelope sleeve sleeve that I can like take a book around in. So mm. I will do that at some point. Okay, and finally... We've got a surprise book. I'm excited about this. Okay. One thing I would say about wrapping books, mm. um, and I'm being really, really picky. Yeah, go on. Um, but when you do a book subscription box, you are up against people like Fairy Loot. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got a different audience because you're doing horror rather than they're doing fantasy. But when you're up against people, this is just nitpicky advice. Mm. When I used to wrap books, for when I would do the events at my old bookshop mm. um, I used to wrap them because I used to regularly do a blind date with a book and oh, stuff like that fun. or um, the book of the year would get wrapped mm. um, okay. and the one thing that I would always make sure to do because I would never let anyone else wrap them because they never fucking did it properly was um, mm. use double-sided tape oh um, so that it oh what a hack. doesn't look quite so oh, again it's yeah. that like just slight more professionalism. Yeah. And that you I don't see that, that bit of tape. Yeah. And it just looks like it you've wrapped it and it's just stuck by itself. And it looks very like clean Ooh. and very yeah. Very like magical. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a great. Idea. Especially when you need to do things like this, like this bit of tape down the side. Yeah. Maybe because the paper's ripped or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, double sided tape is your best friend. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and rip this. Nice. <laughs> All Hallows by Christopher Golden. Oh. Can I read us that blurb? Yeah, I do. Okay. It's Halloween night, 1984, in Coventry, Massachusetts, and two families are unravelling. The Barbosas have opened their annual Haunted Woods attraction in the forest behind the house they're about to lose. The Sweeneys are fighting about alcoholism and infidelity on their front lawn. Up the street, a high school senior is about to have her secrets exposed, while down the street, the truth about Ruth and Zach Burgess turns out to be even more horrifying than the rumours ever were. And all the while, four children who do not belong are walking door to door. Children in vintage costumes with faded, eerie makeup. Children who seem terrified and who beg the neighbourhood kids to hide them away, to keep them safe from the cunning man. But with families falling apart and the community splintered by bitterness, who will save the children of Parmenta Road? All Hallows, the one night when everything is a mask. <laughs> Sorry, this what? Was, this was on the table in the bookstore that we met in, and I was and I was looking at it like, mm, yeah. So I am very, very happy with this. We've got, um, we've also got. <laughs> Some quotes here about the book from none other than C.J. Tudor, uh, Chuck Wendig, and Christina Henry. Okay, yeah. so we've got two like big horror names yeah. and a big fantasy thriller. Yeah, crime. yeah, 
this is also Stephen King on the front. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously. Pfft, what are you going to say? Tightly wound, atmospheric, and creepy as hell. I loved it. God, that cover is fit. That is gorgeous. Oh, I'm very happy with this. Thank you so much, Horror Heart. This is great. Something you said um, before we started recording was that the box that it comes in should be black. Yeah. And I completely agree. And I think... Keep it on the, vibe. Yeah. And I think the red logo would really pop yeah. against that, like that also red the, bloody book. Also, the red logo, we, we sort of took a torch to it and we had a look at it really closely because it's a mm. beautiful logo. Yes. The red is just too dark to yeah. see against that black background. Yeah. And we, I think it needs, it needs to, be, to be, yeah, blood red. Thick light yeah. red. Because it's such Neon. a beautiful logo. Yeah. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't disappear. No, definitely um, not. Into, definitely yeah, the back of the, um, the, the black background, should I say. Yeah. If you want to have a look at Horror Hut, their um, Instagram is at Horror Hut, or one word, so H-O-R-R-O-R-H-U-T underscore book club. Yeah. So Amazing. check them out. Oh, I'm so glad I got that from them. Thank you so much, Horror Hut. Awesome. Um, I think that's our show. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Now we have to do the bit that we never remember. Great. And we will be reading that off the screen till the day we die. If you liked our show, please like, comment and subscribe as it'll help us reach more hectic bookworms. You can find us on Spotify and YouTube as Hectic and Eclectic Podcast, on Twitter at The Hectic Pod, on Instagram at hectic.eclecticpod and TikTok at Hectic Eclectic Pod. If you have any fan mail to send us, any suggestions, please send it to hectic-eclectic-pod at gmail.com and any hate mail you can send to your mum. <laughs> Bye! Bye.